Hey everybody, we are going to be talking about growth and decay. And so basically we're dealing with an extension of the ideas we talked about in the last chapter, in the last section rather. So remember we were dealing with the exponential function y is equal to a times b to the x power. We're going to be working on that um, with each of the situations that we're talking about. So exponential growth, we, just, we, we understood what that was from our last section. It's when you have a situation where something is growing, um, an amount, money, or something. Exponential growth is when you have this situation where you can model um, the growth of a thing by this equation such that b is greater than 1. And so we saw when b was greater than 1, our values will go up, up, up very quickly. And so that's exponential growth. Compound interest is a very deep discussion. I'm going to try to make it simple. So Back in the day, I think when we were studying the chapter on percentages, we talked about simple interest. And it was basically this. If you put some money in the bank and you say that you're going to get 5% interest on it every, and you leave that money in the bank for however many years, you just take 5% of that principal amount, that's the initial amount you put in the bank, and then you multiply that by the number of years that it's there and you get it. So for instance, if our principal amount was $100 and we put that in the bank and then I was making 5% interest, which does not happen most places at all anymore, and I was making about 5% interest per year, what I would know is 5% of 100 is $5. So if I'm making $5 per year, basically, and simple interest says if I leave it in the bank account for 10 years, I'm going to take that 5, multiply it by 10, and boom, I've made $50 over the 10-year time, which is good to do. Now, compounding interest, so all of this was simple interest, right? This was pretty simple. Compounding interest takes a different look at it. You start off with the same $100, but if we compound that interest every year, instead of me looking at, um, just a basic $5 payment because we're doing $5 a year. If you leave it in the bank for one year, at the end of the first year, you get 105. But now we're not 105%, my bad. You get $105, right? That's just me adding 100 onto um, 5 onto the 100. But now, instead of taking 5% of 100 and giving you that again for the next year, compound interest says, hey, take 105 calculate 5% of that and add it back on to their original amount. So 5% um, of 105 is not going to be $5. It's going to be $5 and 5 cents, right? Which doesn't seem like that much, but if we were talking millions, it would start meaning a lot of money. So then, so the first year you make five bucks, the next year you make $5 and 5 cents. So we get, um, uh, you have $110.05. Um, that five cents would be like that. And then you would continue to compound that interest. So every time you add 5% on, you're not adding 5% on your original amount. You're adding it on each subsequent amount per year or whatever the time allotted is. So that's what compound interest is um, in a nutshell. If that didn't make sense, hopefully the examples will. We'll get there. And then um, exponential decay. There's two things that I want to talk about there. Exponential decay is when we have y is equal to a times b to the x, but the b value is now, if you remember from the last problem, between 0 and 1, right? Uh, when we talk about money that has this situation, when you're talking about the value of something that is exponentially decaying, last um, video I said, oh, that's just an exponential decay situation. The, the proper word would be depreciation. Depreciation. So you can think about the depreciation of the value of a car. I think I talked about that last time. Or, um, you know, your stock values are depreciating because of whatever's going on in the market. Something like that. So that's what um, our vocabulary is going to get us into and have us thinking about. Let's go ahead and attack some problems. So let me make the screen a little bit easier for us to see. So we have a situation where um, 1971 there were this amount of females participating in a high school sports um, in high school sports since that time the number has increased an average of 8.5 percent per year write an equation to represent the number of females particip participating in high school sports since 1970 okay so here's how we would do it our situation is going to look like this we're going to start off with the idea of y equals a times b to the x 
A being our initial amount, okay? So this will be our beginning amount. So the amount Y of young ladies or women participating in this sport started off at 294,105. So we start that off with that initial value A. B has to be the value of increase. How, how can I write that? I could write 8.5%. But that's weird. I don't want to calculate 8.5%. I want to calculate something else. I want to calculate the initial value plus 8.5%. I want to keep the initial value and show that I'm having an increase. The initial value is 294,000. So I really want 1 times 294,105 plus 8.5%, which we write as a decimal as 0 0.085. I want to let you think about why that makes sense in a little bit. Remember this value, um, B, since we are increasing, has to be greater than 1. And so it makes sense that we need to have a big number. The 8.5%, the 0 0.085 wouldn't make sense. But why the 1? Because I am adding on to the existing number. So imagine if I did a little distributive property. Distributive property would take this number, multiply it by 1. That's my original. And then take this number and multiply it by 0 0.085. That is the increase. So I keep my original and add the increase. Make sense? I hope so. All right. So I take that value. And then since this increase is happening annually, I believe they said that increase on that per year, then this value has to represent the number of years um, past 1971. And so I can just say T, where T is um, the number of years um, greater than 1971. Or, yeah, or I could say, or I could write it differently. Maybe this might be a little bit more elegant, where T is the year um, minus 1971. Right, so if I put 1981 in here, it would be 10 years and it would show like every 10 years that increase would happen. And so this is the equation. I'm going to write it a little bit neater. Y is equal to this very large number, 294,105 times 1.085. Notice what I did, I just added that together to the T minus 1971 power. All right. Okay, according to the equation, how many females participated in high school sports in the year 2001? So I would take that same equation and simply substitute in the year 2001 for um, T. And then I would be calculating the difference. Oops, that's not what I need. I would be calculating the difference between that and um, 1971. And that's not too bad. That's what, 30 years? So then I would plug that into my calculator. So I literally plugged this information in, and I'm going to show you how I did that because I'm not sure if you're comfortable with the exponential functions in Desmos. But when I plugged that information in, I got 3,399,339.5 3, approximately. So how did I put that information in? Just so you know, um, when you're using Desmos in a situation like this, you need to know how to access this exponent here, and your even your phone calculators can do it. So notice I put in um, the large number, the 294,000, blah, 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 times 1.85 to the power of, and I have open parentheses here. You, you would, When you want to get an exponent, let's say I had 2 to the third power, you're going to click on this guy here, and it's going to give you access to the exponent. If you need to put an expression up there, you put parentheses, and then you can put like a whole bunch of stuff. Just saying, just in case you were wondering. All right, now let's go back to our problems because I don't think I answered the second part. Um, no, I actually did. We're good. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at uh, the next example. So compound interest. So there's a couple. There are a couple of equations that are um, going to be associated with compound interest, and we'll talk about those. So this is the general formula that we're talking about, or the general equation for um, exponential growth. And compound interest equations look like this. The amount of money you get is equal to uh, the principal times the rate. Um, I'm going to actually put 1 plus the rate because of the example we talked about earlier to the t power. So this is definitely one very um, 
usable equation, but this is only useful if we're talking about yearly compounding, if we compound every year at the end of the year. And sometimes in some situations, you'll compound a certain amount of times per year. And so that equation looks like this, R over N, the principal will be multiplied by one plus R over N to the N times T power. I would love deeply to explain this in great detail if you are interested. I mean, you can just um, memorize it and this would be compounded um, N times per year and it'll make sense when we use it. But I would love to talk a little bit more about where these two equations come from and why they're sensible. Anyway, so we're gonna use the information over here. If the money um, that the Native Americans received from Manhattan had been invested at 6% per year compounded semi-annually, how, um, how much money would there be in 2026? What an interesting and weird question to ask. But anyway, I digress. Um, semi-annually, what does that mean? Hopefully you guys realize that it means twice per year. So in this case, let's go ahead and figure out what we have. We've got amount. The amount is what we're looking for is equal to the principal. Well, the principal would be the amount that they were paid, quote unquote paid. And if we go look down here, we see that it's approximately $24. So the amount is equal to the principal. The amount that they would have is equal to the principal 24 um, times one plus the rate. The rate is 6%. So I write that as 0 0.06, the decimal version of 6%. And now N, how many times is it being compounded per year? It is being compounded semi-annually, which means twice per year. So I put a two here. And I'm going to raise this to the two times. How many years has it been since 60, did they really ask us to do this? Compounded per year, semi-annually, 1626 to 2026 and so that's 400 years 400 years and so I'm just really going to shove all this into a calculator I'll show you um, I'll do it with you so um, if we if I remember correctly we've got $24 and we are putting it in one plus and let's make a little fraction bar here let's think how can I write this so I'm going to write it as um, 0 0.06 Divide it by 2, closing that off there. And I'm going to raise this whole thing to the uh, power of 2 times um, 400, right? Because it's N. Let's get my exponent correctly. I'm touching that. And it's going to be 2 times, times, where are you, multiplication symbol? All right, you see how I had that little problem? I need to put parentheses so all of the stuff I'm putting is going to be raised to um, the power of, uh, of this exponential value, okay, times 400. So I'm really just plugging in those pieces. And if that money was invest invested 400 years ago and they were able to get 6% per year, they would end up with this enormous sum. So this is 4.4, and that 11 is times 10 to 11. You guys know scientific notation. So basically, you can, if we just rounded it to 4, you know, if we just, instead of even looking at the 4.46, if we just talk about four, that's four followed by 11 zeros. It's pretty big money, right? So that would be $447 billion. All right, interesting problem. So what it is that, that I think the um, authors of our textbooks really want us to see, and it's a decent problem enough, is just at how great um, things can get. I mean, I know we're talking 400 years, but from $24 to 447 billion, that's quite um, an exponential growth. All right. So a farmer buys a tractor for $50,000, and if it depreciates 10% each year, find the value of the tractor in seven years. We'll start off with this equation where Y is, we're looking at the amount and at a certain time, and A is the initial amount that was spent on the tractor and now we need to account for the depreciation and we do that by writing 0.9 as the depreciation factor in a sense or the depreciation rate and the x as the exponent that refers to the years and how am i calculating this 0.9 one minus the 10%. So 90% every year is worth 90% of what it was every year. So let's calculate this quickly. I plug in my seven for years 
And just after that short time, we end up with 23,914. I'll talk to you guys soon.